Over the last few months, the British government has selflessly tried to raise the rest of the world's spirits by going into the sort of tragicomic meltdown that we Brits usually associate with other less, well, British countries. We are now on to our third Prime Minister this year, our fifth since 2016. Yep, British PMs now have all the staying power of DeFi DGENs flocking to the latest Uniswap clone on some dog-themed sidechain. And you can be pretty sure that fact has raised more than a few wry smiles across the world. So, for those who haven't been keeping up with this political soap opera, the mop-haired moral incontinent Boris Johnson was forced out in July after a series of scandals involving, well, almost everything you can think of. After an interminable election process, he was replaced by malfunctioning android Liz Truss. I, conference, rebelled who promptly helped tank the economy and lasted less than two months, our shortest serving prime minister ever. Yep, she who was beaten by a lettuce. One tabloid has set up a live stream of a head of lettuce to see if it outlasts the beleaguered leader. Liz has now been replaced by Rishi Sunak, an Oxford-educated former Fulbright scholar, Goldman Sachs employee, they do get everywhere, don't they, and hedge fund bro who at 42 also happens to be the the youngest British PM since God was a boy, and the first British, Asian and Hindu to hold the position. He is also fabulously wealthy, wealthier in fact than our new king, thanks in large part to his marriage to a billionaire's daughter. I like your style, dude. Now, this is neither the time nor the place to speculate how long young Rishi may last in the absolute bin fire that is British politics right now, nor dwell on some of his past triumphs and uh, not triumphs. Yeah, yeah, I'm a coke addict, oh, a oh, total coke addict. addict. All I will say is that despite his undoubted intelligence, he does come across as someone always rather surprised to find himself in the real world talking to real people doing, you know, real things. I'm an enormous Coca-Cola fan, uh, Coca, yes, I won't drink no Diet Coke, no Coke Zero, <laughs> never any Pepsi. A classic politician, in other words. So, what is all this pro-crypto talk about then? Is Rishi indeed one of us? Well, the crypto media certainly got itself all hot under the collar when he was elected to the top job over his apparent enthusiasm for all things crypto. Now, admittedly, he has made a lot of the right noises, albeit in his presentation at an office team building weekend that all involved wish wasn't happening style. And it should also be noted he was until recently the Chancellor of the Exchequer, that is, the Finance Minister, so he should have a passing acquaintance with digital assets at the very least. Well, it would appear that he does, and one announcement that has garnered a lot of attention was a tweet from April this year in which Rishi stated, quote, we're working to make the UK a global crypto assets hub. The post linked to an article on the UK government's website, which expanded on Rishi's statement and talked of stablecoin regulations aimed at eventually adopting them as a form of payment, a, quote, crypto asset engagement group to work more closely with the industry, and even, be still my beating heart, a collaboration with the Royal Mint to issue an NFT. Forget El Salvador. Could Britain be the next country to adopt BTC as legal tender? UK to the moon! Sorry. So, Rishi is now Prime Minister, and it should logically follow that his crypto plans are swiftly put into action, right? Well, perhaps this is indeed the case, as Cointelegraph reported on Wednesday on the Financial Services and Markets Bill. This is proposing, quote, a range of measures to maintain and enhance the UK's position as a global leader in financial services, and mentions the global crypto asset hub thing once again. It also introduces a new term, digital settlement assets, because hey, why not some more jargon, eh? Which appears to be a catch-all term that lumps stablecoins and other crypto assets into one. The general idea of the crypto-focused part of the bill seems to be to reach the promised land of regulatory clarity, which will then see the crypto and blockchain industry flock to Britannia's fair shores. Hallelujah. 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 
The subtext here, of course, is that the UK is looking to strengthen its financial sector in the wake of its departure from the EU. The thinking seems to be that, freed from EU legislation, the UK is now all set to position itself as some kind of Northern Hemisphere Singapore, only larger, colder, less politically stable, with worse public services and much higher levels of crime. The crypto bros will come for the favourable regulations and stay for the lifestyle. Went off everywhere that day and that, like everyone was fighting with everyone. That's still got the beer stains on and a couple of blood stains on there. I'm being cynical, of course, which is my right, indeed my duty, as a British citizen. It certainly is encouraging to see the British government making these sorts of noises, especially as the likes of the EU are making progress with their own crypto regulations. Well done, Rishi, and keep up the good work now that you're running the show. But before we add laser eyes to pictures of Rishi and begin the beatification process that will eventually elevate him to the same status as St. Michael of Sailor, we should just dig a little deeper into his love for all things digital. Because it turns out that our Rish has a soft spot for a particular type of digital asset more than perhaps any other. CBDCs. What's that, Rishi? CBDCs. Did you say... Central bank digital currencies. Oh. CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. Oh, no. Yep, you see, along with all his other many achievements, Rishi is also a member of the World Economic Forum and is thus of the You Will Own Nothing and Be Happy Brigade, who, as we all know by now, are not exactly pro-crypto. Now, consider the secondary headline of this article from last year about his CBDC plans. Chancellor says MOVE is one of measures designed to boost City after UK's Brexit departure from EU. That's right, boost city, as in the city of London, as in all Rishi's old mates from earlier in his career, and not the fortunes of the average Brit. Sure, Rishi wants to attract crypto companies to the UK, but I can't help but imagine that the kind of companies he has in mind are those for whom things like decentralization, financial freedom for all, and frictionless peer-to-peer -peer transactions are not top priorities. And it's the fortunes of the average Brit that may in fact have the ultimate say on Rishi's crypto plans. Put bluntly, the UK's economy is in the toilet and someone seems to be continually yanking the chain. Even though Liz Truss's absolutely batshit economic policies have mercifully been reversed by Rishi and new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, there is still a circa £40 billion hole in the country's finances. While countries everywhere were hammered by COVID and are now being hammered by the inflation and rising prices that have come as a result of it, the UK is suffering worse than many of its peers for reasons that are just too much of a hot potato to go into here. But the stark fact is that many British children are reportedly going hungry. Many Brits will be unable to afford to heat their homes this winter. And as interest rates go through the roof, hundreds of thousands will soon find themselves unable to pay their mortgages. This in a country which already has a homelessness problem that is, quite frankly, shameful, and where many citizens rely on food banks in order to get by. In short, Rishi and his new team already have quite enough to deal with as it is, and it's hard to imagine that a crypto-friendly policy is going to find itself at the top of the agenda anytime soon. That said, of course, given how keen Rishi and all his mates at the WEF are on CBDCs, CBDCs. Well, perhaps we're closer to having a Britcoin than we think. God save, well, all of us. <laughs>